Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to take a daytime portrait and turn it into a night portrait using GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.14 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course before I get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my best-selling GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginners to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. And you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. Your premium membership includes access to my GIMP Help Center app, ebooks including my GIMP Book of Layers, and exclusive content not found on YouTube. You can start your premium membership off with a seven day free trial and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. All right, so here is the original photo we'll be working with today. You can download this for free on Pexels. Just click the free download button here and I will link this in the description of the video. And here is the final photo. So you guys can see this looks like a nighttime photo. We've got stars in the background here. And there's a little bit of light on our subject here, but you can still see the night encroaching on our subject, and that's what makes this look so realistic. So I'll be showing you all of the photo editing techniques to accomplish this final composition here. I do want to note that my setup right now, you'll notice it looks a little bit different. This is based on my previous tutorial on how to make your GIMP look like Photoshop CC 2020. Of course, this isn't an exact replica of Photoshop CC 2020 because there are some differences between GIMP and Photoshop, but I really like this setup and I changed my icons to be my color icons again instead of having them be those flat one color icons that Photoshop uses. But I want to point out that my tool options, which are usually down here, have been moved right here. And my layers panel is going to be down here in the bottom right, my layers, channels, and paths, instead of being up top here. I do recommend you check out that tutorial if you want your GIMP setup to look like mine and for this tutorial to be a little bit easier for you to follow. I do recommend this new setup here. I like this setup a lot. Anyway, let's get started. So this is the final photo and we're going to be working with this photo right here, the original photo. You can open this by going to File, Open, and searching for the file on your computer. But once you have this opened up, the first thing you want to do is duplicate the photo. And I'm just going to rename this one Night Photo, hit the Enter key. We can rename this one Original, hit the Enter key. Clicking on my Night Photo layer. So the first thing I'll do is I'll come over here to Colors, Levels, and we're going to use this tool to make our photo look darker. So the first thing is I'm going to clamp the highlights in my Output Levels slider here. So to do that, I just drag this little slider, the white triangle, to the left. So that is clamping the highlights and therefore making my image darker and darker. Next, what I'll do is I'll decrease the midtones. So you'll see that'll also darken up the image. I don't want to overdo it. And I'm also going to bring up the highlights. So this is going to bring out some of the detail that was in the highlights in the original image. And that's going to actually add some contrast as well. You can also adjust some of the shadows here. And I'm not going to overdo adjusting the shadows. So maybe about right there. So there's a before. There's an after. Then I'm going to change my channel from the value channel over here to the blue channel. So I want to make this a little bit bluer. Usually when it's nighttime, you know, your photos are going to look a little bit on the blue side. So we're going to try to emulate that to make this photo look more realistic. So I'm going to play around with the sliders here. So I can bring in the highlight slider to add some blue to the highlights. And shifting the midtone slider to the left will add some blue to the midtones. So there's a before, there is an after. We're going to add some more blue later via another technique, so I'll just click OK for now. So next I'll come over to Colors, Colorize, and I'm going to add some dark blue to this. So I'm going to click on the color here to change my color, and I'm just going to click and drag this up a little bit here. And I'm also going to make this blue a little bit of a darker blue. And don't worry about the way the model looks right now. We're actually going to separately adjust her. So just look at the background for the most part, the background elements. So we'll go with about right here and click OK. 
And we can also adjust the lightness in here if it's a little too light. That looks pretty good, so I'll click OK. Next, I'm going to highlight my subject, and to do that, I'll use the foreground select tool. I'm going to go through this process pretty quickly, but I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to this tool, so definitely check that out. So what I'll do is I'll hide the night photo layer and click on my original, and hold control and zoom in a little bit. I'll grab my foreground select tool here in my toolbox, and again, my tool options are over here today. Let me actually scroll out a little bit, zoom out. I'm going to click and drag my mouse and just outline my entire subject. I'll connect the last point, hit the enter key, and now I'm going to increase the size of my brush using the bracket on my keyboard. Make sure this is set to draw foreground, and now I'm just going to select the main subject, making sure I don't select any parts of the background. Once I've selected most of my subject, I'll hit the Enter key. And most of our subject is selected here. It's not perfect, but that's okay. I'm going to hit the Enter key again. That's going to convert this to a selection area. Then I'll come up top here to my night photo. And while this is still selected, I'm going to right click on it and go to Add Layer Mask. Under Initialize Layer Mask 2, I'll choose Selection and click Invert Mask. Then I'll click Add. So that will show my subject now. I'll hit Control shift a to deselect that. So here is what the photo currently looks like. Obviously, our subject is too bright, so this looks really fake, and we need to refine the edges a bit. So what I'll do first off is I'm going to adjust the levels on the original photo layer. So I'll click on the original layer, come over here to Colors, Levels, and once again, I'm going to clamp the highlights a little bit not quite as much on this layer because I still want her to be pretty well lit. And then I'm going to decrease the midtones a little bit, not too much, and then increase the highlights to bring out those details and potentially bring down, so go with about right there. There's before, there is an after. And now what I'll do is once again come over to the blue channel and we're going to just add a little bit of blue to this image, to this layer. That looks pretty good so I'll click OK. Now I'll come over and click to create a new layer and I'll just name this one blue which it's already named that and I'm going to make sure this is filled with transparency and click OK. So make sure this blue layer is just above your original layer. Hit Shift B or grab the bucket fill tool from the toolbox. Then we're going to select a dark blue like we did earlier. So I'm just going to change my color here to a nice dark blue. That'll probably do right there, so I'll click OK. I'll fill this layer in with blue. Obviously that doesn't look great, so I'm going to change the layer mode of the layer so we'll go with overlay, and then I can adjust the opacity of this a little bit to my liking. So maybe about right here. Then I'm going to click on the layer mask for the night photo, and I do need to refine this layer mask right now. It doesn't look great. So what I'll do is grab my paintbrush, and I'm going to reset my colors over here to black and white for my foreground and background colors. I'm going to adjust my brush, so I'll go with a nice circular brush here with some fuzzy edges. I'm going to turn down the hardness. I want this to be a nice soft brush, and I'll increase the size. I want it to be a fairly large brush. And with my black selected, what I'll do is just paint sort of near the edges, and this is going to allow me to reveal some more of the background here behind the girl. Once I've done that, you can see here this part is too bright, and I actually want more of the night actually encroaching in upon the subject. So I'm just going to increase the size of my brush a bit more. So this will be a pretty big brush. And I'll come over here and switch my color to white. And now I'm going to paint from the outside here and just allow this to very subtly, very gradually encroach upon the subject here. 
I'll hold control and zoom out a bit. So now I'm going to do the bottom portion and then come up around the sides here. I'll hold control and zoom in a bit. So down here towards the bottom, we can have it coming up a little bit more like that. And if it's encroaching upon the subject a bit too much, what I can do is turn down the size of my brush, switch over to black, and we can just sort of bring back some of that original photo in the bottom layer there. And I think that looks pretty good. So next we're going to add in our starry night to put in the background there so it looks like there's some stars in the sky. To do that, I'll have to open up my photo of the starry night and I will link that in the description of the video. But I'll go to File, and in my case, I'll go to Open Recent, and I'll come over here to the starry sky photo. So here's that photo. I'll click and drag this tab over to the tab that we're working on and release. Make sure you're hovered over the layer here when you release. Now I'll grab my Move tool, and on this layer, which I can double click and rename Starry Night, hit the Enter key, I'm going to change the mode of this. So I'll change it to screen. That'll get rid of all the black in the photo. So all I want are the stars. I don't want any of the black in there. And I can reposition this if I want. You can see where the stars are gonna be. It's just this part of the sky right here. So it's a very small portion. But maybe we'll go with about right here. Next, I'll add a layer mask to this. So I'll right click and go to add layer mask. Under Initialize Layer Mask 2, I'll choose Black Full Transparency. Make sure the Invert Mask option is unchecked and click Add. That will hide everything. Now I'm going to grab my paintbrush and I'll switch over to white as my foreground color. And with this fairly large brush, I'm going to paint the starry sky in here. And this is probably too large of a brush. So I'll decrease the size. But I'm just subtly painting in these stars up top and I'll hold control and zoom in a bit, decrease the size of my brush, and paint anywhere where I want there to be stars. You can hit the X key to switch to black and just double check that you're not accidentally painting on any of the foreground objects. And if you want, I'll hit the X key again. You can also paint down here, so hold control and zoom in, decrease the size of my brush, and you can paint in some of the stars in this little area, which is also the sky. Hit the X key again and just double check by painting black that there's not anything overlapping right here. Hold control and zoom out. Now I'll add a vignette to the photo. This is going to help the photo look darker and just look more realistic in terms of it being a night photo. So I'll come down here, create a new layer, and I'll name this vignette. Fill it with transparency and click OK. Then I'll come over to Filters, Light and Shadow, Vignette. That's obviously way too strong, so I'm going to adjust the radius to bring it out a bit. And then I'll also adjust the softness here. So I'm going to increase the softness. And I'm also going to adjust the gamma, so I'll decrease the gamma. And I might increase the radius a bit more. So decreasing the gamma a little bit. Here's a before, here's an after. I'll click OK, and there's our final photo. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.